Today I'm doing my second half of the bookshelf tour. <laughs> series bookshelf. So I hope you enjoy it. Just going to do a quick intro because I forgot to film one. So let's just jump straight into it. I made a separate series shelf because I like organizing my books by color, which is harder to do with series books because each book in the series isn't the same color and I want to have them arranged chronologically. So, in another, I don't know if it's a weird thing or if everybody does this, but I arrange them chronologically from right to left instead of left to right the way you, we read. So starting on the right is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. Okay. i start off by saying sorry if it's a little shaky because I don't own a tripod or anything. So first we have The Merlin Trilogy by Mary Stewart, City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. This was a discarded book from the library so it doesn't have a book cover. City of Fallen Angels also by Cassandra Clare and it was also a discarded book. City of Ember by Janine Duprat, Wolves of the Cala, The Shining, Night Shift, Heart of Atlantis, Dolores Claiborne, The Cell Audiobook, Dark Mesque, Revival, Under the Dome, Harry, Misery, The Dead Zone, Salem's Lot, Christine, It, and The Mist, all by Stephen King. I understand Stephen King isn't a series, but since I own so many of his books, I just decided to put it on my series shelf. And on the second shelf, we have Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. Vampire Diaries, The Awakening and the Struggle by L.J. Smith. Vampire Diaries, The Fury and the Dark Reunion by L.J. Smith. Marked by P.C. Cast and Christian Cast. Another reason why it's kind of shaky is I'm short, so I kind of have to reach up to get the shelf well. So it's kind of hard to hold it and talk, so I'm sorry. But we have Zeros by Scott Westerfield, Margot Langan, and Deborah Bencotti. Witch and Wizard and Witch and Wizard The Gift, both by James Patterson. The Death Cure, The Maze Runner, The Fever Code, and The Kill Order, all by James Dashner. I own The Scorch Trials, but I lent it to my sister, so it's not on my shelf. Half Wild and Half Bad, both by Sally Green. Vortex, Catalyst, and Insignia, all by S.J. Kincaid. The Sacrifice, The Fear, The Dead, The Enemy, all by Charlie Higgins. I can't remember if I showed off this pillow, which I keep all the pins I have on I'm on my last bookshelf tour, but... Here it is again, if I already showed it. Moving on, we have Blackout, Deadline, and Feed, all by Mira Grant. My third shelf, F Sanctum, and Escape the Asylum, by Madeline Rooks. Hollow City, and Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, by Ranson Riggs. The Magnolia League, and The White Glove War, by Katie Crouch and Grady Hendricks. Soul Screamers, by Rachel Vincent. Two copies of Divergent by Veronica Roth. I got one copy for my birthday and the other copy was discarded from the library. The Eye of Minds and The Rule of Thoughts by James Dashner. The Diviners by Liba Bray. Reboot by Amy Tintera. Goth Girl Rising by Barry Liga. Risked, Caught, Torn, Sabotaged, Sent, and Found all by Margaret Peterson Haddix. I also have this cute Targus figurine from Doctor Who that I keep on my shelf. I also keep a Doctor Who lunchbox and magnet on my shelf. The Throne of Fire and The Serpent's Shadow by Rick Riordan. I own the first book too, but I lent that out to someone as well. Colomay's Gate, Gollum's Eye, and The Amulet of Samarkand, all by Jonathan Stroud. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, all by J.K. Rowling. Gatekeepers, Watcher in the Woods, House of Dark Shadows, all by Robert Leparlo. The Haunting of Derek Stone, The Red House, and The Ghost Road, The City of the Dead, and Bye You Dogs, all by Tony Abbott. Mocking Jay, and The Hunger Games, by Susan Collins. Devon Delaney Should Totally Know Better, and The Secret Identity of Devon Delaney, both by Lauren Barnhold. And this book was kind of the first book I ever annotated because we had to read it 
in elementary school and like write notes on it and do an essay on it. So this is kind of what got me into annotating books and looking at books deeper than just face value. The Princess Trap and The Princess Plot, both by Kristen Boy, The Lost Tarot, The Lightning Thief, The House of Hades, and The Son of Neptune. On my bottom shelf is kind of miscellaneous, but mainly Doctor Who books, because I used to be a really big Doctor Who fan, and then also some writing books and textbooks. Let me just show you my makeshift tripod, which consists of my saxophone, my trash can, and a stack of books. I moved the book up here just so it's easier to film, and I can use my makeshift tripod so the video is still. So first we have the Visual Dictionary of Doctor Who, the 2006 annual Thrilling Adventure in Time and Space, Doctor Who the official annual 2012 book, the official Doctor Who annual 2013 book, and the official 50th anniversary annual book. And it's kind of embarrassing showing all of these because I feel like I'm now revealing what big of a geek I truly am. I have Doctor Who's 100 is Scariest Monsters book, and I have the Essentials Guide of Doctor Who. Next is The Clockwise Man by Justin Richards, and this is the first Doctor Who book I ever got, and I made a little TARDIS bookmark. Only Human by Gareth Roberts, The Resurrection Casket by Justin Richards, The Nightmare of Black Island by Mike Tucker, The Stealers of Dreams by Steve Lyons, The Feast of the Drowned by Stephen Cole, and The Stone Rose by Jacqueline Reiner. All these books I got on Amazon for like $5 I think, and that was only be and they cost 99 cents, and it was only with shipping did it make him $5. So if you're like a Doctor Who fan or just like books in general, Amazon is a great place to buy used books because you usually get them for very cheap. The Sting of the Zygons by Stephen Cole, Borrow Time by Naomi A. Adler, Nuclear Time by Ollie Smith, and Plague of the Cybermen by Justin Richards. Next are some more miscellaneous type books I did not, where I didn't really know where else to put them and they didn't fit on my one-off books bookshelf, or and they're not a series, so it is kind of like a random bunch of books. But I have Sleeping Freshman Never Lie by David Lombard. Then I have The Hunt for the Seven by Kristen Mordenshaw. It used to be on my one-off series shelf, but I've bought too many books and it just doesn't fit anymore, so now it's on the miscellaneous shelf. Cry the Beloved Country by Alan Payton. This was also a discarded book. I love it when I find, like, classics being discarded because it just makes me so happy to be able to get such a great work of literature for free. I have Wreck This Journal by Carrie Smith. I've seen a lot of these books and people showing their finished books on YouTube. I'm not very good at keeping up with actually doing it, but I love these books. Me, they're fun to do. I also have This Is Not a Book by Carrie Smith. Another book to the Carrie Smith books is One Page at a Time by Adam J. Kurt. I also have Macbeth by Harden Bloom, which isn't the actual story of Macbeth, it's more like a literary analysis of it. And now this is going to reveal how big of a nerd I am because I picked it up, discarded it, not for a class or anything, just because I wanted to read it for fun. I read Macbeth for literature and it was a really good story and I kind of went to see how other people interpret it and read it. And I recommend reading any of the works by Shakespeare, but Macbeth was definitely one of my favorites by him. I also have A Play on Words by Mac Villay. This also kind of reveals my nerdiness because it's just a book of words basically to teach you new words. It's kind of hard to explain but if you want to write anything and learn new words and expand your vocabulary this is good because it has paragraphs showing how it's used, what part of speech it is, they even have like poems where they use the word. I would choose one word a day and just focus on that word and it helped me just expand my vocabulary. Then there's Plot Perfect by Paula Muner. As you can see, it has been heavily used because I love writing stories, so I use this to help me develop plot. 
and it was perfect because it really helped me develop the plot because there were some things I thought I knew how to do but I didn't actually know how to do. That was my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed it and comment below if you've read any of these books or have any more book recommendations. Thanks for watching. Bye!